Hi, from today a new series will be started on Spionis Stories. In the episode 1, today I am going to share with you the assassination of senior Hamas leader Mahmoud al mabkhuk by Mossad. It has now become an open secret. Israel has to this day never confirmed or even invalidated its role in the assassination of Mahmoud al mabkhuk one of the senior chiefs of Hamas's military. If this is the first time you are visiting my channel, don't forget to subscribe it for future updates. Mossad, the feared and respected intelligence agency of Israel, which is separate from countries' democratic institutions. Mossad is responsible for intelligence collection, covert operations, and counterterrorism. In 13 December 1949, Israel's co founder, First Prime Minister David Ben Gurion, created a new agency for intelligence operations outside the country's borders. He later named it the Institute for Intelligence and Special Operations in Hebrew, which is called Mossad. When Mayor Degan took over as the director of Mossad in the year 2002, it became more dangerous and active. Dagan's men were very active in enemy countries. Dagan was called the King of Shadows. The revenge level of Mossad is too severe. Mossad is known for their ultimate methods of assassination. They research about the modern poisons and radioactive substances to kill their enemy. They have a research unit just for this work only. Mossad has a hit team or assassination unit named the Kidon. It is said that yeah. the Kidon men are so secretive that even some of the Mossad men themselves don't know who they are. Now let us go to the story. All is about one of the successful assassination operations by Mossad in Dubai. Al Bustan Rutana Hotel, Dubai. 19th January 2010 time 8:30 in the evening a man with black hair a slightly receding hairline and a thick black mustache was captured over closed circuit camera in the entrance of the hotel he registered his identity as a palestinian merchant in the register book of the hotel Actually, the man who just entered the hotel was not a merchant. He is Mahmoud al Mabhuk, a top Hamas operative from Damascus of Syria. He had been in Dubai for less than six hours, but already he had met with a banker who was helping him to arrange various international financial transactions required to purchase special surveillance equipment for Hamas in Gaza. He had also met with his regular contact from the Al-Quds force of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, who flew in to coordinate the delivery of two large shipments of weapons to the extremist Islamic organization. al Mabhuk did a lot of business in Dubai. It was at least his fifth visit in a little less than a year to Dubai. He traveled on a Palestinian passport which listed a fake name and a fake occupation. In reality, he is in Hamas for decades. Twenty years earlier, he had kidnapped and murdered two Israeli soldiers and more recently, after his predecessor had been disposed of by the Mossad in Damascus. He had been in charge of stalking Hamas armories. A step or two behind al Mabhuk, there was a man with a cell phone, flowing him into the elevator. Coming now, the man said into his phone. al Mabhuk 
might have overheard, but he didn't seem to notice. Almabhok was by nature an extremely cautious man. He knew that the Israelis wanted to kill him. You have to be alert, he had told Al Jazeera in an interview the previous spring. And me, praise Allah, they call me the fox because I can sense what is behind me, even what is behind that wall. Praise God, I have a highly developed sense of security, but we know what the price of our path is and we have no problem with it. I hope that I get to die a martyr's death. The elevator stopped at the second floor. Al Mabhuk stepped off. The man with the phone stayed on, going to a higher floor, definitely a tourist. Al Mabhuk turned left and walked towards his room. 2.30. The hallway was empty. Out of habit, he quickly scanned the frame of his door and the lock mechanism, looking for nicks, scratches, and hint of tempering. There was nothing. He entered the room, closed the door behind him. He heard a noise and turned to see what it was. But two pairs of strong arms gripped him. A third man gagged him with one hand and with the other pressed to Alma Bhok's neck an instrument that uses ultrasound waves to inject medication without breaking the skin. The instrument was loaded with Saksa Methonium Chloride, an anesthetic known commercially as Scoline, that is used in combination with other drugs in surgery. On its own, it induces paralysis and because it causes the muscles used in breathing to stop working. The men maintained their grip until al stopped struggling. As the paralysis spread through his body, they laid him on the floor. al was wide awake, thinking clearly seeing and hearing everything. Now he understood that his turn had come. He had just couldn't move. Foam formed at the corners of his mouth. He gargled. The executioners checked his pulse in two places as they had been instructed to do, making sure that their target was really dead. They removed his shoes, shirt, and trousers, place them neatly in the closet and put the body into the bed under the covers. The entire episode took 20 minutes. The team closed the door in such a way that it seemed to have been locked from the inside with the same slide into place. They hung a don't disturb sign on the door handle, knocked twice on the door of 237 as a mission accomplished signal and then they disappeared into the elevators. Hotel security found the body the next afternoon after no one answered the maids repeated knocks throughout the day. There didn't seem to be any cause for alarm however. A middle-aged merchant dead in a bed in a locked room with no signs of struggle or trauma was likely indicative of nothing more than a heart attack or maybe a stroke. Al Mabhuk's body was taken to the morgue. His death recorded and catalogued under the bogus name on his passport. The Operation Plasma Screen or assassination of Mahmoud Al Mabhuk was been completed. How all of this started and who are those killers? Those men who killed Mahmoud al mabhuk were from the hit squad of Mossad. The plan for the assassination of Mahmoud al mabhuk had been approved four days earlier on January 15 during a hastily 
arranged meeting in the large conference room near Mossad director Mayor Dagan's office. The most important person at the conference after Dagan was Holiday, who is bald and stocky, had taken it upon himself to command Operation Plasma Screen, the agency's code name for Al Mabhuk. Al Mabhuk, a co founder of the Isad Dinal Kassam Brigades, the military wing of Hamas, was wanted by the Israeli government for the kidnapping and murder of two Israeli soldiers in 1989, as well as purchasing arms from Iran for use in Gaza. So the Hamas operative had long been on the Israel's kill list. Dubai was the most convenient place to kill Al Mabhuk. The other areas where he spent time, Tehran, Damascus, Sudan and China had efficient secret services and posed far more problems for a hit team. In 2009, that is one year before of this successful assassination of Al Mabhuk, the plasma screen crew of Mossad once tried to eliminate him in Dubai, but it was unsuccessful. They poisoned a drink that was brought to his hotel room. But either they got the dose wrong or he didn't sell enough. Al Mabhuk only fainted. When he came to, he cut short his visit and returned to Damascus, where a doctor attributed his fainting spell to mononucleosis. He accepted this diagnosis and didn't suspect an attempt on his life. So, this turn of events caused profound frustration within the Mossad. Holiday insisted that there would be no mistakes this time. The Hitu squad would not leave Dubai before they saw with their own eyes that Al Mabhuk was dead. The first three members of the plasma screen team landed in Dubai at 6.45 on the morning of 18 January. Over the next 19 hours, the rest of the team, at least 27 members altogether, arrived on flights from Juris, Rome, Paris and Frankfurt. Twelve of their passports were British, six Irish, four France, four Australian and one German. All were genuine, but none actually belonged to the person using it. Some were taken from their owners, residents of Israel with dual citizenship, some were obtained under false identities, some were stolen, and others belonged to the deceased. At 2 a.m. on 19 January, Gail Folliard and Kevin Deveron landed. They were to be the main pivots for the operation controlling the forward command room, the communications personnel, the guards and the lookouts. They checked into separate rooms at the Jumeirah Hotel. The reception clerk took their money and gave Folliard room number 1102 and Devon 3308. Peter Alvinger the commander of the mission landed at the airport 21 minutes after Folliard and Devron, carrying a French passport. After clearing passport control, Alvinger pulled a counter surveillance muscle, exciting through the terminal door, waiting three minutes, then turning around and going back inside for a predetermined meeting with another team member who had come to the airport earlier by car. By early afternoon, the entire team was waiting tensely for the arrival of Al Mabhuk. He was expected to fly in at 3 o'clock, but there were still some gaps in the intelligence. Al Mabhuk arrived at 3.35 p.m. A team tailed him to the Al Bustan Rutana Hotel. The team members made extensive use of cell phones. 
but in order to avoid direct links between their numbers they dialed a number in Austria where a simple switchboard installed in advance put the call through either to another phone in Dubai or to command post in Israel. The crew members already in the lobby of Al Bustan Rutana were wearing tennis cloths and carrying rackets. Though curious, without the usual accompanying covers. After Al Mabuk got his room key, two of them entered the elevator with him. When he got out on the second floor, they followed at a discreet distance and noted that he was staying in room 230. Once Alvinger knew Al Mabhuk's room number, he made two phone calls. The first was to the Al Bustan Rutana to book a room. He asked for 237 directly across the corridor from 230. Then he called an airline to reserve a seat on a flight to Munich via Qatar later than evening. A little after 4 p.m., Al Mabhuk left the hotel. The team trailing him noticed he was taking precautionary measures, doing his own kind of maslul. He had good reason to do this. Almost all of his comrades in Hamas since the late 1980s had died unnatural deaths. But his moves were simple and unsophisticated, and the team had no trouble keeping eyes on him. Kevin Devron waited in the Al Bustan lobby for Alvinger, who arrived at 4.25 p.m. The security camera clearly captured his red-covered European Union passport. Two hours later, four men came to the hotel in two pairs. All wore baseball caps that hide their faces. They carried two large bags. One of them was an expert at picking locks. They went directly to the elevators and to the room 237. At 10 o'clock, the crew telling Al Mabhuk reported that he was heading back to the hotel. Devron and Polyard kept watch in the corridor while the lock picker began working the lock on the door to 230. The idea was to reprogram it so a Mossad master key would open the door without being locked but at the same time not disrupt the normal functioning of the proper key. A tourist stepped off the elevator but Devron quickly engaged him in some innocent, distracting conversation. The tourists saw nothing. The lock was picked and the team entered the room. Then they waited. And when Al Mabhuk opened the door and entered into the room, what had happened with him was clearly described in the first half of the video. After the completion of the operation, within four hours, most of the team was out of Dubai and none were left 24 hours later. In Tel Aviv, a mood of self-satisfaction reigned, an atmosphere that was later described as the euphoria of historic success. Everyone involved, Merdegan, Holiday, the hit team, believed another mission had been expertly accomplished. Dagan reported the kill to Prime Minister of Israel. Al Mabhuk won't bother us any more. And this way, one of the most famous operations of Mossad, the plasma screen was accomplished. I hope you like the first episode of our new series, The Spionage. If you like it, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.